why is it that they feel it is a shame for them to be living in suburban America? something tremendous that I think you might be interested in reading. Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. I want to read you something from the beginning of the book. Frank and Alice are having a cocktail party with their neighbors that they feel that they have a rapport with. Shep and Millie. They've always got along very well with this couple because they, they also have this dissatisfaction with where they live. When these people come together, they can express their frustrations. It was only then, during a dissertation by Millie on lamb chops, that an almost palpable discomfort settled over the room. They shifted in their seats. They filled awkward pauses with elaborate courtesies about the freshening of drinks. They avoided one another's eyes and did their best to avoid the alarming, indisputable knowledge that they had nothing to talk about it was a new experience. Two years ago, or even a year ago, it could never have happened. For then, if nothing else, there had always been a topic in the outrageous state of the nation. And even after politics had palled, there was still been the elusive but endlessly absorbing subject of conformity, the suburbs, or Madison Avenue, or the American society today. Oh, Jesus, Shep might begin. You know this character next door to us, Donaldson? The one that's always out fooling with his power mower and talking about the rat race and the soft cell. Well, listen, did I tell you what he said about his barbecue pit? And there would follow an anecdote of extreme suburban smugness that left them weak with laughter. Now, I'll skip ahead a little bit. So what happens is there's a lull in the conversation and Frank feels very awkward. He feels that, oh, like what's happening? Why, why is our cocktail party like, have we run out of things to say to one another? This has never happened before. And so he begins to tell one of his stories from his military days. And so he told his anecdote as carefully and as well as he could, using all the tricks of wry self-disparagement that had come from his style of military reminiscence over the years. It wasn't until he got to the part that went, so I poked the guy next to me and said, hey, what day is this? That he began to feel uneasy. And by then it was too late. There was nothing to do but finish it. And it turned out to be my birthday. He knew now that he'd told this same story to the Campbells before, using almost the same words. It must have been a year ago that he told it in connection with his turning 29. Both the Campbells made conscientious little clucks of amusement, and Shep discreetly inspected his watch. But the worst part, the worst part of the whole weekend, if not his life to date, was the way April was looking at him. He had never seen such a stare of pitying boredom in her eyes. It haunted him all night while he slept alone. It was still there in the morning when he swallowed his coffee and backed down the driveway in the crumpled old Ford he used for a station car. And riding to work, one of the youngest and healthiest passengers on the train, he sat with the look of a man condemned to a slow, painless death. He felt middle-aged. Why do these two people feel that they deserve something more or that they are better than their neighbors? Why is it that they feel it is a shame for them to be living in suburban America? Is that life in the suburbs or is that people who've just run out of things to say to one another? It is the question that is in the novel. How can they make it better? What are they going to do to make it better? It's, it's a very sad novel, it's very tragic. It's a theme that I find endlessly exciting to read about. The short stories of Raymond Carver, nearly everything that John Cheever ever wrote, Don DeLillo, White Noise. The frustration of life in, life in the suburbs. 
perhaps just a very simple irony. Why do people live there if they feel so fed up with the state of living there? Why did you move there if you were going to be unhappy? Perhaps it's something that, well, we could afford a house, started paying the mortgage, and now we live here and we're stuck here with this life of gardening and children and neighbors and, and driving to the station every day. There's Frank and Alice, and they are frustrated and they are smashing against one another and they are not sure why they are doing it. So how can we avoid running out of things to talk about at cocktail parties? But for my own part, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to read, or I should say I'm trying not to read the same author more than once in a year. So that as much as I love this book and as much as I think this is probably going to be the best book that I've read in 2021, I will not read another novel by Richard Yates this year. And even if I perhaps don't enjoy those books as much. And if I think to myself, well, I would rather read another Richard Yates novel, I won't. There's too much to read. There are too many authors. There, there are too many stories. Thank you for listening. I hope I've persuaded you to, to maybe go out and find a copy of this novel. I read it in a few days. I couldn't stop reading it. It is easy to read. It races along. I started reading the first couple of pages just to get a feel, and I read 50 pages before I knew where I was. If you're interested in buying this book, I've provided a link below to Amazon, and you do any shopping on Amazon, not just this book, but any shopping at all, my YouTube channel will get a little bit of a, a kickback for whatever money you spend. You know, that is much appreciated. And if you would like to support my YouTube channel, where I'm going to be promoting some books that you may not have heard of. I've also started a Patreon page. For your support, I'm going to be making patron-only videos so that, yes, most of the videos will be on YouTube, but every third or every fourth video is going to be patron-only. If you are interested in the literature I've been talking about, it, consider supporting me on Patreon, and then you won't miss any of my reviews at all. It's the summertime. Give it a try. Give it a try. It's I read it so fast. I read it in three days.